business today is the Members' Business Debate on motion number 14991 in the name of Cameron Buchanan on keeping litter off the streets. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. I call on Cameron Buchanan to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Buchanan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Scotland is dirty. There is no way around this, and the amount of litter bears this out. In spite of well-meaning local initiatives such as Leithers Don't Litter and many others across Scotland, these measures can make a difference in the local area, and they're setting the exact example that what we need to see replicated on a national scale. Unfortunately, the problem of litter is more prevalent in Scotland than in almost any other developing country. Now, Jerry and Susan Farrell of Leithers Don't Litter are, amongst others, running a determined campaign that is spreading the message about the problem we face and what we can all do to help. As they have highlighted, problems include general rubbish, dog fouling, overflowing bins, fly tipping and takeaway cartons. As for tackling this problem, they are right to highlight the difference from adopting a street and using a simple litter picker if locals make that effort for their own communities and such initi initiatives spread across Scotland, we can see the lasting difference we need. Having said that, local authorities also have a large role to play here. As well, in, as, well as clearing up reported messes, they must do their utmost to clear litter before it has to be reported and, of course, improve their standards in bin collection. Now, it is not just the duty of councils because the key here is education. We have to educate people not to leave litter and this education has to start in nurseries from the age of three or four. I heard recently that in Germany they actually have litter classes for primary children and they all grow up having due regard to the problem of litter. The fines here seem to make no difference at all, although they have recently been increased. The problem is that when you see so many people dropping litter and you ask them to pick it up and say that they shouldn't drop litter, some of them will just give you the happy motoring sign or tell you to go and see a taxidermist. So the public, therefore, are not willing to confront litter louts or litter droppers. Somebody phoned me the other day to say he'd seen bottles being thrown out of a car window, which is totally unacceptable. All I could do about this was, I suppose, is honk my horn loudly to show disapproval. But even this can lead to aggressive road rage. The other problem we've seen is that when grass verges are mown and cleared on a country lane, nobody stops to pick up the litter that's been left, so it just blows all over the place. Now, during this summer, this is what started on the debate, I telephoned Edinburgh Airport to say there was an awful lot of litter on the approach road to the airport, left after the grass had been cut. I was told that it was not their responsibility, but the responsibility of the City of Edinburgh Council. So I then phoned the council and said it wasn't theirs, but the airport. However, I don't know what happened, but it was cleared up very quickly. The solution, I think, is that people in, should be employed who mow the lawns tend to, and tend the verges could pick up the litter while they're at it. It doesn't take much initiative, surely, to have a bag, as they do in other countries, strapped around your waist for picking up litter while it's been left. Another problem is the collection of rubbish bags in the street. And with the council now cutting back on the collections, it is even more important that the bins or boxes are both gull-proof, weather-proof and out on the correct day. I don't think we need litter wardens, however much we might want them, because the council wouldn't be able to fund them, and there's no way of controlling them anyway. After all, if the other countries don't have them, why do we need it? Why is it necessary in Scotland? The problem surely is becoming a scourge, and I feel we should be tackling it head on. So what do we do about it? We've had these debates before in the Parliament, I've looked them up, and they've, they've just gone on and on. As I said before, it's all about, I think, education. We have to educate people not to drop litter and to put it in their pockets until they get to a bin, rather like trying to deal with the, pro the proposal of dog fouling. It cannot be a coincidence that countries like Switzerland and Austria, and even to a lesser extent, northern Italy, have a lot less of a litter problem than we do. It gives Scotland such a bad name, and all the tourist brochures extolling the virtues of this beautiful Scottish countryside, it just takes a few pieces of litter lying around to destroy that image. Personally, I don't think straight panels are the answer, as they have to be enforced, and this also seems to be a problem. They have to be enforceable. We need to shame people into not dropping litter, and also to encourage children from a young age not to drop any litter at all. Perhaps we could have more dedicated days in schools that encourage children to pick up litters. Some initiative like this might work. We must also remember that education initiatives have to extend beyond schools into adult life. Promoting awareness of the scourge of litter and what we can do about it has also to reach parent, dog waters, takeaway owners and indeed adults across Scotland. The many local worthwhile initiatives are excellent for raising awareness locally, but we have to make sure that their example is spread nationally through education. Accordingly, presiding officer, I hope this debate will play a small part in the collective effort needed to spread the benefits of local initiatives like Leithers Don't Litter around the country and try and keep litter off our streets. Thank you. 
Many thanks. And we now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes or so. Please, Chick Brodie to be followed by Alec Crowley. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. May I uh, thank Cameron Buchanan for bringing this important debate to the Chamber tonight. Uh, I brought a similar one some uh, three years ago. Uh, litter costs Scotland over £53 million each year, monies that could be better spent on other services. It's a scourge, it's a blight. It uh, decries any sense of proper national behaviour with regard to, to rubbish. It affects public health, the environment and landscaping. Scotland brought forward its uh, first national litter strategy in June 2014. It is not working. The strategy identified ways to encourage people to take personal responsibility through communication, infrastructure and enforcement. But they don't. Uh, and the local authorities, uh, in my view, certainly don't. Uh, I did at the time propose that on chewing gum, for example, we should apply a 10 pence levy uh, on chewing gum uh, to avoid this chicken pox that uh, destroys our pavements and our streets. Of course, it's a matter of personal responsibility. In the end, we will pay for it either as taxpayers or as customers of goods and services. There is now an £80 penalty if people are caught, which can discourage future uh, offending. Uh, but the, still, today, the mess that lies in the street amounts, we reckon, to something like £1.2 million, which could be uh, recycled uh, and generate income for the appropriate authorities. We can influence behaviour when we work together. And, uh, I have to commend Glasgow Council for its Time or Fine initiative, where if you can't afford to pay the fine, then you spend time picking up the litter that's been created. Presiding officer, when we look at our attitudes to recycling 10 to 15 years ago, there certainly has been a societal change on recycling. There's still lots to do, but the awareness is much greater. We need to ensure we promote the social change in littering and fly tipping to the same effect. And we can do that in a number of ways, making better use of materials that may end up as litter or fly tipping. Whole, the whole packaging industry needs to consider biodegradability a, a, a packaging much more so than it does now. Ensuring our communities are cleaner and safer is essential where we live and where we do business. This will ultimately lead to a reduction in the damaging consequences of litter and fly tipping to our well-being and to our environment. Information, of course, is key in delivering our goals. We need to explain to people what the right thing, to do to, the right thing is to do with waste. And that, uh, presiding officer, as Cameron Buchanan says, starts with the schools. We need to educate. Along with education, there's now a need to ensure we have the proper infrastructure in place. We need to work with the business and designers to ensure that their products can be recycled in the first place. We need to ensure that there are incentives and support in place to support activity which delivers little free in, uh, litter free environments. How long, however, along with that, there needs to be and has to sit alongside it a meaningful enforcement, effective laws and procedures that deter littering in the first place. To deliver the strategy, we need the businesses, the resource management industry itself, the Scottish Government, local authorities, and of course the third sector, including environmental charities and of course local community groups. Presiding officer, local, local authorities and bid districts are encouraged to apply for funding. Where this has been implemented, it has actually resulted in an average of 38% drop. I would encourage much more our local authorities to specifically create social enterprises or community enterprises to take over the management uh, and cleaning up litter. If Scotland is to be home to tourists, if it is to secure Scotland as a beautiful country that we know it is, Government, local authorities, businesses and schools have to work together to push for the change in culture and behaviour that is very much needed. Many thanks. I now call Alec Crowley to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. I would also want to thank um, and congratulate Cameron Buchanan for um, securing this member's debate today on what is a really, really important issue to people's everyday lives. Um, it cannot be stressed enough the impact of living in a housing estate that is continually littered up or, or is, is, is strewn with, with, with people dog fouling where people won't clean up at the back of their dog. 
Um, I would have to say that, that I always make the assumption that the majority of people are responsible and the majority of people are caring and would not litter up their streets or their public parks and would not um, just simply walk away and would clean up at the back of their dogs. So it's a minority that tends to cause the major problem. But a problem it is, because if you're living in, in, in a housing estate, for example, and it's fully litter, then it impacts on the very environment in which you live in, which can impact on the health and well-being of that environment and the residents that live in it. And that's how important this subject is. And it is disappointing, therefore, that there is a national strategy that's in place that doesn't seem to be working. And perhaps we need to be actually asking the question, if it's not working, and the minister can perhaps pick that up, if the national strategy is not working, what is it that we can do about that? I would say, as a, a former council leader, um, where you're faced with making cuts in budgets and you have the choice between the grass verges that Cameron Buchanan mentioned being cut four times a year or once a year or cutting into school budgets, then I'm afraid the grass verges is going to um, come first every time. And the reality of that, is, as we've seen in the summer where you see the grass verges getting cut perhaps once, is that because they have not been maintained and the grass is so long, people have a tendency just to throw rubbish into the long grass. And when that's cut, it's a, a nightmare. So that, that in itself is difficult. We've also seen a reduction in, in the amount of wardens, for example, that are in place. Because again, if your choice is cut wardens or cut education to your children, then I'm afraid the wardens will come first. And it's important that, that the local authorities recognise the importance of this, but if they're under pressure and their budgets are under pressure, then I'm afraid often that will be what goes first. Um, my experience has been in Fife is that we have had problems with dog fouling and I did street surgeries throughout my constituency throughout the summer and dog fouling came up as an issue in many parts of the constituency that where the council have been very proactive, where they put signs up, where they put phone numbers up to report people and where they clearly are willing to act and find people who won't clean up at the back of their dogs, then something is, is done about it and, and you can see improvements taking place. So actually enforcement is important and I think we need to recognise that if we're going to tackle the problem. But also it is true that um, in terms of education, as, as, as both Chick Brodie and Cameron Buchanan have said, education is also really important. An example I would, I would quote is if you look at the, the, the recycling rates, Fife, I'm pleased to say, has, I think, the highest recycling rates in Scotland. And part of that came around because there was a big push through the schools on the eco schools and recycling was part of that. And if you like, it was the education of the children that, that, that was basically pushing constantly with their parents, with their grandparents within the community to actually recycle that I think had a big impact on, on us achieving the type of recycling that we're very proud of in Fife. So education is important. But I do come back to, I remember visiting a school, I think it was last year, and the, the pupils had been across in Germany. Um, and I was asking them how they'd got on there. And they stressed to me that one of the first things that when they got off on the bus um, in Germany, their guide said to them is, whatever you do, do not drop any litter, because it is simply not tolerated in this country. And therefore, perhaps we need to get to that point where in every community it's simply not tolerated here. I think I'm, I'm out of time, President Officer, but again, I would say to Cameron Buchanan, congratulations for bringing this debate here. Hopefully, it just doesn't stop today, but we actually say what's working, what's not working, because this is a very serious issue for people and for communities across Scotland. Many thanks. And I now call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I too would like to thank Cameron Buchanan for raising this motion and securing debating time on what I think we all agree is a very important issue. Scotland's a country that's well renowned for its beauty, not only our vast rural landscapes, but our towns and parts of our cities. However, such places are all too often tainted by an abundance of litter on the streets and waterways of our towns and countryside. 
As someone who's never so much as dropped a sweetie paper in my life, I find it shocking, incomprehensible and quite frankly distressing that in 2016 this is still a problem. Some 250 million pieces of litter are picked up every single year, a figure so high it's hard to fully contemplate the number of people who might, must actually have discarded it. Reducing litter must be tackled. Sadly, not everyone is aware of the impact that rubbish has, not only on the environment and Scotland's wildlife, but also on people's health and well-being. And while short-term way, uh, um, short ways of dealing with litter may work for a while, the only lasting way to stop this problem is by going straight to the source. Public attitudes to littering must change. There is no way around the fact that the responsibility for littering must always come back to the culprits. The very definition of littering itself must be challenged. For while most people appear to be absolutely against ever deliberately littering, they view accidental littering, perhaps only being a, a small amount, or there only being a, a little bit here and there, or perhaps because of a lack of bins, whatever, as a different matter. But it's attitudes such as these that must be challenged. People are generally embarrassed about admitting to littering, and so challenging any littering could be helpful. However, as, as Cameron Buchanan pointed out, this could be met with aggression, so people must always be cautious. But of course, there have been moves in the right direction. Introducing a charging scheme for single-use carrier bags in 2014 was a huge step forward towards cleaner and healthier streets in Scotland. Figures from the first year following the introduction of the charge show that the number of plastic bags given out in shops fell by a massive 80% equivalent to 650 million bags. Not only this, but the scheme saved over 4,000 tonnes of material when taking account of factors such as increased use of bags for life, and as we all know, uh, significant amounts of money were generated for charity too. Scheme like, schemes like this help to change the public's attitude to the environment and what they're doing with our resources. This allows at least some pressure to be taken from local authorities who lie heavily under the burden of cleaning up litter. 15,000 tonnes of litter are cleared by local authorities every single year, and this work is costly. Included is around 4,000 tonnes of tobacco-related litter, such as packaging and cigarette butts, so another reason to give up smoking. It is therefore extremely important, then, to applaud the work of charities and volunteer groups who dedicate their efforts to helping keep the streets of Scotland clean. The work these communities do is invaluable, and they not only set an example to others on how to keep their streets clean, they can encourage others to follow in their footsteps. In my own constituency, I have carried out a Cumbria beach clean once a year for nine consecutive years, involving the local community. Wearing high-vis vests with volunteer and Keep Scotland Beautiful helps make people think. Colburnie Community Council carries out six such days a year, and others take place across my constituency from Beeth to Fairley to Arran. And the Arran Litter Volunteer Network is at the, uh, sorry, the Ayrshire Litter Volunteer Network is at the forefront of such action, organising groups wherever possible. Such groups like these must be applauded as the work they do not only keeps Scotland streets clean and safer, but helps alleviate pressure on local authorities and allows them to use their time and resources on other matters. I have long been an advocate of the Adopt a Road scheme, which works so successfully in North America, where groups, individuals or businesses take responsibility for keeping a given stretch of road uh, free of litter, working closely with local authorities. Schools do work hard to inculcate responsibility for not littering. Indeed, Adults are more likely to be responsible, and so it's their attitudes that must be focused upon. Scotland is rightly considered beautiful, presiding officer, by many visitors, but they also find it dirty by the standards of other European countries. Uh, in 1985, I had a German girlfriend who invited her parents to stay in Scotland for a fortnight with her. They left after three days because the country was just too dirty in their view. I found it profoundly embarrassing. Uh, we must work together to reduce litter and thereby change perceptions of Scotland for the better. Thank you. Many thanks. Welcome, Chisholm. Uh, presiding officer, I would like to congratulate Cropper McCannan for bringing forward this uh, very important debate, but also apologise to him, the Cabinet Secretary and the uh, presiding officer, because I, I do have to leave as soon as I've finished speaking. I shouldn't really be speaking in this debate because I'm, I'm due at a meeting very soon in my constituency, but I couldn't not speak when I saw the motion because obviously of the reference to Leithers don't litter. Now, I think, and I'll briefly mention education and enforcement, but I think what struck me most recently is the, is the contribution of voluntary groups to this effort. And of course, that's been brought to my attention because the amazing campaign of Leithers Don't Litter, it's only been going for a few months, and yet it's engaged uh, large numbers of people in the community. And it's certainly something when I have a bit more time on my hands in seven weeks' time that I personally would want to get involved in. And one of the key things that they're, they're doing is adopting a street, which is, of course, the, 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 the concept 
described by Kenny Gibson a, a moment ago. And if you go onto the Facebook page, you can, people can sign up uh, to uh, adopt a street. And clearly, uh, there is a focus on litter, but there's also a focus on dog fouling. They had a post uh, a few days ago that uh, there had been a dog poo found even in a children's playground. And this has prompted them to organise a, a demonstration of responsible dog walkers uh, in Leith. And that obviously is again part of, of a community effort to put pressure on those who do uh, behave in an antisocial way in relation to dog fouling in this case. Uh, to change their behaviour. So I think this is one of the, the best community initiatives that I, I, I have seen, and I, and I cannot uh, speak highly enough uh, of all the, the many people in my constituency who are involved in this effort, because clearly they want to keep Leith beautiful. Leith is beautiful. It is only spoilt by litter uh, and dog fouling. And if litter is bad, I think in my uh, mind, dog fouling is even worse. I spoke about the example in the children's playground. I had an own example from my own family last week where my three-year-old granddaughter going to nursery school had, you know, had a, a massive amount of, of dog poo over her boots. They were under the soles, they were up the side of the boots, and she had to uh, go to nursery school like that. And this, this, is, this is absolutely shocking from every point of view, from a health point of view, apart from every other objection to that. And, and I really think on that particular issue, we have to have a special effort to change people's behaviour. I quite often say, not entirely jokingly, that any politician who could get rid of dog fouling in my constituency would instantly be elected to this parliament, because I think so many people feel so strongly about that issue. And I think here enforcement is important. Education, obviously, in schools, and I hope Perhaps there can be, there are sometimes national campaigns about this, but perhaps particularly around this issue of dogpiling, I would suggest that there should be a national initiative and a national campaign, but it has to be backed up by uh, enforcement. And I don't see how culture change will be brought about unless there is a stronger element uh, of enforcement. And I think one of the problems is, well, obviously that there aren't um, sufficient environmental wardens to catch people, and we understand the reasons for that given council budget. But another problem is that the fixed penalty notices that are imposed by environmental wardens aren't always paid. In fact, I think to, on a very large number of occasions, they're not paid and then the fiscals are not willing to intervene. So I think in a kind of way, this offence has to be given a higher status. It is very, very serious antisocial behaviour. And I think there has to be an organised effort at the enforcement uh, and legal level to deal with it, as well as the wider uh, initiatives for cultural change. But in the last 10 seconds, can I again pay tribute to uh, Leithers Don't Litter? I cannot speak highly enough of the work that they have done and are continuing to do. Many thanks. Can I now invite Richard Lockhead to respond to the debate? Cabinet Secretary, seven minutes, please. Firstly, thank you to Cameron Buchanan for, of course, raising this issue once again in the Scottish Parliament, like many people have over the years, in relation to the amount of litter on our streets. And I, I clearly can see that all the members who have spoken in today's debate feel very strongly that litter is indeed a blight on our amazing country and that those who continue to litter in Scotland are highly irresponsible individuals. Litter does affect the way we feel about where we live, work and spend our leisure time, which in turn has a huge impact on our health and well-being. The numbers involved are truly draw-dropping, with over 250 million items of easily visible litter dropped each and every year, as members have already mentioned. So that's 26,000 tonnes of littered material. High-value littered items, such as plastic bottles and cans, would be worth over £1.2 million if recycled, again, as mentioned by members. And over £53 million of public money is spent each and every year tackling litter and fly-tipping. So that is money, of course, that could be better spent in other important services in our society. And items that are littered or fly-tipped, of course, also pose a health hazard to both humans and animals alike. And we all know about the impact that marine litter can have on marine wildlife. So, recognising all of these negative impacts, this government has launched a Towards a Litter-Free Scotland, our policy. We launched that in June 2014, which, as you say, was 
Only about 18 months ago, uh, our first ever national litter strategy uh, since devolution. So 18 months is not a long time to properly evaluate its success or otherwise, given that this is a, an issue about cultural change in Scotland. Uh, and as I said before, that is the first ever national litter strategy in Scotland. As part of that, we did run a national media campaign against littering behaviour uh, across television, radio and social media as well. As again mentioned, we also increased the fines for littering from £50 to £80 and for fly tipping from £50 to £200 after the consultation we had a couple of years ago. In October 2014, we introduced a charge on single-use carrier bags, a highly visible form of litter. That resulted in an 80% decrease so far in the number of bags distributed uh, over the first year of the charge, uh, again, as Kenny Gibson in that case uh, mentioned. So that's 650 million less bags been taken every year by shoppers in Scotland, which is good news in anyone's book. We've also committed over £575,000 towards Keep Scotland Beautiful's Clean Up Scotland campaign from 2013 to 2016. Uh, if people in this chamber, if members in this chamber have a view as to whether or not that organisation have delivered the goods for that resource or otherwise, please, you know, we should uh, hear about that because we're still hearing about problems with litter in Scotland, but yet Keep Scotland Beautiful and other organisations are being funded to, to make sure a lot of activity is happening. And that, a lot of that activity is happening, to be fair. And we all know that from the activity in their own communities. From April 2015, we introduced powers for Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park as well, and other public bodies to issue fixed penalty notices. We're also continuing to explore the role that deposit return could play in Scotland to reducing littering and improve recycling quality at the same time. So I certainly agree with many members that we need to find a, a fresh approach uh, where necessary for some of these topics within the litter strategy. We also need to learn from what other countries are doing successfully that perhaps we're not doing in this country. So deposit and return is not a new idea. It's new to Scotland uh, and indeed the rest of the UK. But of course it works well in other countries and the Scottish Government's put in a lot of effort to try and ascertain whether that would work in Scottish circumstances. And Zero Waste Scotland were commissioned to carry out that work. And we're now undertaking further research to look at issues such as the, the impact of deposit and return on smaller businesses, corner shops, small grocers, and so on and so forth, because they'd have to take back the, uh, the returns, uh, cans or bottles, uh, and be part of that arrangement. Uh, most likely, if that was to go ahead, so we'd have to make sure we understood exactly how that would work, as I said, in Scottish circumstances. But, you know, this is a system that does work in other countries, and if you attach a value to cans or bottles, then people are less likely to litter it because they can go and get their money back, or indeed others are incentivised to go and collect it from our streets and our communities because, in turn, they can raise money from doing that as well. And that's certainly the experience in other countries. So, so deposit and return could be if we decide to go for that in this country and that decision is yet to be taken part of a litter strategy uh, as well. And tackling litter, again, as members have said, is about behavioural change. Uh, that is also a very, very much a core part of our litter strategy. We are working with our partners to provide information, improve infrastructure and in making enforcement more of a deterrent. We're encouraging people to take responsibility for their own behaviour. In addition, to the, in addition to the national campaign mentioned earlier, Zero Waste Scotland has developed a toolkit of signs that organisations around Scotland can then customise and use free of charge. We're improving the infrastructure itself through our communities by funding the installation of over 3,300 recycling on the go bins since 2011. So more of them are now present in our communities. And we're supporting their use with the Recycle for Scotland branding. Work is also ongoing to update the Code of Practice on Litter and Refuse, which covers the various ways in which local authorities in particular can intervene. We're bringing that guidance uh, up to date to ensure that it supports our wider litter strategy. So we do know that real change will take time, innovation and commitment from everyone uh, involved. I should also say another half a million pounds since 2014 has been invested in supporting innovative projects by local authorities and community groups to move away from simply cleaning up to also focusing on prevention. And these groups are helping to drive the behaviour change that we need to see. That's included Scottish Waterways Trust, who are working to develop a, a crowdsourced approach to monitoring litter and raise awareness through working with school children. Other initiatives being funded through that are Green Space Scotland, working with three communities to tackle litter and fly tipping through a range of community-led green space and street improvements. So there's a whole range of actions underway at the moment, and we know that littering behaviour costs Scotland £78 million in direct and indirect costs to our society and economy. 
uh, as, as I've indicated previously. I think our bottom-up approach is very, very important as part of this debate. And, of course, in Cameron's motion, he talks about leithers don't litter. And I want to uh, commend both Cameron uh, for bringing that to their attention, but also the people behind that fantastic initiative that Malcolm Chisholm spoke about as well. And I personally congratulate Mr and Mrs Farrell, who uh, founded that initiative, and clearly looking at all the various actions they've undertaken and hearing about them today in the Chamber, it's a fantastically successful idea, and hopefully that's an example for other communities across Scotland to follow at the same time. I should make a personal mention of Pete Miners in Murray, my own constituency, who uh, tirelessly patrols the Lossiemouth riverbanks and collects lots of coastal litter in the Lossiemouth area uh, in Murray and gets a lot of press coverage for doing that. And that's the kind of activity we love to see local people volunteering to do and we owe them a huge debt. Indeed, a young man called Joe Purney phoned me at my office uh, last week who is starting up with some others, a forest community cleanup group. And this is a young man who feels so strongly he wants to clean up the streets of forest and elsewhere that he's now started this campaign in that town and I said to him of course that I look forward to working with them doing that but all our, all our experiences can give examples of people at grassroots level uh, putting their, their effort where their mouth is and going out there and cleaning up streets in the local community and I think we have to do a lot more to encourage that and resource that in the years ahead so we do have a national voluntary effort across every town, village and city in Scotland and I do believe that will take us far along the road to having a much cleaner Scotland which is something we all want to see. And I thank members for their contribution today. And I will certainly take away the good ideas I've heard about during this debate. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes Cameron Buchanan's debate, keeping litter off streets. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.